Okay, great. Welcome everyone. So I'm glad that you can hear me. I'm going to talk today for about 45 minutes an hour, whatever time I have here. And today was a very interesting day in the market. Uh, my name is Melissa Armo and I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh and I, I'm mostly short. And so today is a very interesting day. Why? Because the market had a big gap down today. So one, I like to short more than I like to go long, although I will go long. And two, I focus on gaps. The market really tanked this morning in the gap. Now, just in the last, I don't know, 15, 10 minutes, we had a big move up. I didn't get to hear why there was something that the, that the Fed is doing now. But long story short, um, last Tuesday, March 3rd, I saw that the market was going to sell off and have a big tank day. So I've been calling shorts and puts from, from pretty much from the prior th Thursday. So the Thursday before whatever that was, March 3rd, I had started to call some. But then on March 3rd at night, on Tuesday night, it was the post-market trading on Tuesday night that I noticed that we were going to really collapse. And so I kept calling short, 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 shorts. Today, every single person that is on my options newsletter made hundreds of thousands of dollars today. People are in love with me right now. And yesterday, I knew it was like, I mean, some of the trades were a little bit down. Some of the trades were ready up. The biggest one we had was Boeing. We really got it all the way down. But long story short, I did say to everybody, I said, make the market pay you. Make this market pay you. And I was trying to like, you know, make sure that people hung on because what happened today was what my expectation was. And I just didn't know exactly the second that it was gonna happen, but it did happen today. So the trades we're gonna go over, we're gonna go over a couple day trades here today and a couple options trades from last week. I did not have time to put the trades in here today from today because today just happened. Uh, but I think today is a great, 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 fantastic, best example I could ever find in my life of why it is so important to understand gaps. And many people do not understand gaps. And a lot of people think they can't make money in the market. That is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely not true. You can make money in the market. Even if you have a small amount of money, you can make money in the market, but you have to be on the right side of it. A lot of traders, a lot of retail traders were on the wrong side of the move that has been occurring and setting up. And like I said, I saw it early, but better to see it early than late. People were long this market. People were buying dips. People like to buy gap fills. All of that makes absolutely no sense at all. It is a poor way to, to trade. And even if it works one out of 25 times, you lose all the rest. The way that you make money in the market is buying, institutional buying and shorting, selling action that comes in from institutional money. And I saw that, what I saw was, what I saw that night was that selling was starting to come in. Number one, institutional selling. Number two, I also saw that no institutional buying was coming in, which is the only way that the market would have been supported to not drop and fall off like it did today. Because retail traders do not make the market and cannot support the market, okay? And I know a lot of people are panicking today as well because of the fact that your 401ks, if you have one, have taken a nosedive, nosedived after today. But the long story short is that there will be a time to buy back into the market. It's not right now, okay? Now, let me just see if there's any quick questions here. Um, uh, a list of indicators. I don't know if you were talking to me or the previous person. I didn't even bring up any charts at all yet. So um, I don't know if you were talking about the previous person who ever asked the indicator question. I'm not, I'm not sure. So let's start talking about this. And if we have time at the end, I'll bring up the market and I'll show you what I saw that night on the third. But let's get right into it here. Anyways, I own my own company. It's called the Stock Swoosh. Okay, it's a great name. It's a very catchy name. And again, I like to short mostly. Although I will go long. We went long Tesla this year many, many times, which worked. And I've been long the market on many, many times, 2019, the beginning of 2020. If you have questions, you can call me at 929-3200-GAP or email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can also uh, email me if you would like a trial to the trading room for next week, okay? So this is a good time to think about, we're not quite through the, to the first quarter of the year, but almost the first quarter of the year, to think about where you're at with the year. How, are you where you want to be with your trading today, you know, March 12th? Are you on track for the year to meet your goals, to achieve your goals or not, okay? You can make money and do this as a career, but you have to have a set strategy that you follow. And I think transitioning is very, very important, okay? 
For me, I love, I love, love, love what I do. Now, in my previous career, I did mortgages. And although I liked that at the beginning, I liked the money, it became very, very stressful. So as time went on, then I realized I didn't want to do this anymore. And I wanted to find a new career. And what I like about trading is that I'm in control. I work for myself. It's only during the week. It's only from 9.30 to, to 4. And sometimes I'm done trading in the morning and I have the weekends off, okay? So long story short is that, you know, if you don't like what you're doing and you want a different, uh, a, a different career, trading can be it. I think people start out trading and they lose money because obviously a lot of people lose money when they start. They don't know what to do. And then they end up kind of getting sucked in, sucked into the dream of getting rich with the market. Now, while the people that are following me and, and, and my, my clients today really got rich on the calls that I made in the last two weeks, the fact is that in any normal given week, your goal is just to make money. You chunk it out. You slowly build your account if you have a small account. You slowly build your account if you have a big account. And then every once in a while, you really get paid from the market by doing continuous right action, which obviously my clients saw today. But you think that you can't do this when you start out and you lose. That's not reality. Reality is many people just don't focus enough. They're afraid to take risks. They're afraid to do something different. They want to believe something like gap fills or buying dips or whatever works because, because they can understand it. They can wrap their head around it because it works one out of every 10 times. You, you have to understand what's really going on in the conceptualization of the market. And I wrote this, actually, I wrote this really good let me see if I can find this room right now. Because I, I, I appear on television and I wrote this yesterday morning actually because I saw this coming up. Let me just find this quick because I didn't have it in here. I wrote this because the market, let me just quickly find my TV talking points really, really quick. The market itself, and again, this is how you can make money in the market. And I know people are all going crazy because of the virus stuff. But the market, here I found it. The market is always a forward indicator of things to come, meaning the market sees things ahead of time and reacts immediately. So that's what I wrote all the, all the news networks that I'm on yesterday. This was yesterday morning before even the drop off. So the market here is, is I know everyone's in a panic mode about the virus and I live in New York City, but it's the market is like reacting, re, market reacts first. It's a forward indicator, the price action that's happening. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, someone is asking a question here. Let me see. Uh, can I tell you some good penny stocks? Absolutely none. No good penny stocks. Do not trade penny stocks is my two cents with that. They're junk. Institutional money does not trade penny stocks, and I would not touch them with a 10-foot pole. That's my, that's my two cents on that. We trade stocks and companies you know. You're better off taking 100 shares of something like Apple in the right direction, of course, rather than um the, rather than trade junk okay you want me to be brutally honest today here i'm going to be brutally honest today and i've been brutally honest actually with everything i've been i've been emailing to tv people although i'm not i'm not sure people want to hear what i have to say people want to be positive and optimistic me saying that the market was lower predicting that the market was lower doesn't mean the end of the world it just means that this isn't a good time to buy there will be a good time to buy and and when that time is my clients will know when that time is it is not right now okay you can't predict tops and you can't predict bottoms and you can't make a lot of money trading junk. So you take the right actions and that's how, and then you're consistent with it. Trading real stocks, real companies with real volume, things that you can get behind. You know what I mean? Like you can't get behind a penny stock. It's junk. So that's my two cents on that. I know people want to trade them because of the fact that they have maybe have small accounts, but you can trade equity trades and you can trade real stocks with small accounts. You trade on margin. You can open up a prop account. Okay. So think about this. What's your dream career? A job that has a high income potential. Of course. If I said to you, would you rather make $200,000 a year or $100,000 a year? You'd say, I'd rather make $200,000 a year, Melissa. I'd say, okay, well, what's it going to take to get to that point? It's, this is a job that does not take a lot of time out of your week. And that is the best, best uh, thing I can tell people. And one of the reasons why I wanted to switch careers, because I was working seven days a week doing mortgages. You know what I mean? Um, someone's talking about the virus. 
But anyways, let's get back into gaps. Why trade gaps? Trading is a career that can offer you financial freedom, fulfillment, and happiness. And boy, in days like today, there's a lot of happiness when you're making a lot of money. You can have the life you want if you're willing to learn something new and develop the skills to become a successful in a new industry. Volatility is good if you know how to play it. This I have never seen better trading than I've seen in the last like three months. Like this is the best trading I have ever seen if you're an active trader. Like if you know what you're doing, you're just making money hand over fist right now. Like, I mean, this is the, this is the best trading I've ever seen, quite frankly. But you've got to know what to do. And not only that, you really had to stick with it. Um, and I say hold the conviction. And that's, that's what I was telling my people. Hold the conviction. Okay. Now, this was one of many, 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 many trades we did in VA. And this was a gap. For those of you that don't understand what the gap is, let's review it. This was Boeing. I've been calling this lower since December. I was right. Dropped off, fell off a cliff here. This is 2020. Anyways, this was a couple of days ago. Stock closed here, gap down, dropped, fell. Okay. So this was a day trade short in Boeing. Called a bunch of options in this too, but just was, this was the day trade. Entry in this was short, 228.25. Stop was initially 232.90. Risk was $2,325. Then we added a little bit above the price, 229.65. Total shares then was 1,000, doubled up. Got the confirmation. Average price then was 228.95. Here's the sell-off, drop. This even fell even farther than this. I thought this was a really good exit. It collapsed. So $12,200 on one day trade in one day. This is a real stock that really moves and can move a lot. This was a gap. Now what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. This stock closed at four o'clock Eastern time and then opened the next morning here at 9.30 down. So this was a short, okay? And again, this was a day trade short. I did call puts in this too and you could have done puts in this. If you're not comfortable doing equity trades, you could have bought puts. But anyways, the idea is to get the direction right in the gap which in this case here, it was selling off. It was selling off and it's going lower and it's going down. Okay. This also collapsed today. This absolutely collapsed today. Um, yeah, some, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, you know, again, going back to what I was saying about institutional buying and selling, institutions aren't buying penny stocks, just so you know. They're very, that, that's what I would say, like if you, You'd be better off buying something like Bitcoin than a penny stock. Like that's what I would call speculation. Penny stocks are like speculation. Like some of the some of the things that just came out and people are in love with work, Zoom. There's there's a couple of new issues out there. I typically don't trade anything that doesn't have 12, 24 month history. I might make an exception, but like th that's called more speculation to me, where you're where you're you're speculating that something is going to move up, and you certainly would never want to short things like that that are absolutely worthless because you really they could go to zero. And you could lose all your money and you'll never get it back, okay? And something like Boeing, you can trade on margin. So you do not need $228,000 to take 1,000 shares of this. You would have traded it on margin, four to one margin at a retail account, or you could have bought a put and paid the price to the put, or you could do it on a prop account where you get 10 to one margin. And then you would have needed about 22.8 if you had 10 to one equity margin as a day trade. And, but you could do an option, okay? You could do an option where you have a cash account where an option might cost, say, for something, example, I'm just throwing it out there, maybe five bucks, where you'd buy one contract that costs five dollars, and that's it, okay? You can make money doing it that way if you don't even have a margin account. So there's many, many ways to trade it, but the strategy, the system, the philosophy is the gap. This was such a great call. I called the 200 puts in Boeing yesterday, and the stock opened today. I don't remember the opening price. It was like it, it, it was like under 170. It fell off the planet. It collapsed. And actually, you could have taken the trade yesterday and got out before the close yesterday. But if you held it into today, you made even more. Anyways, I saw in December that this was going to fall. I saw really, really early this. We got every single short in this. We got every single one. And I and I said it on Fox. Actually, in December of 2019, I was on Fox News on a Saturday. I remember when I was on. And I was talking about Boeing, saying it was lower. And people, people, people didn't believe me at the time. And again, you can, you can do options out for, I typically do them out for a week or two to try to get the fast moves. But you could do them out for a couple of weeks. You could do them out for months, okay? 
But I will tell you this really quickly as I'm talking here now, though, as far as the market and everything I'm saying today, because we did we did tank today. I'm kind of going to just step it back a little bit because we've had such a big month here, start to March. And I'm going to relook at everything Sunday, take tomorrow off, sit down when the market's completely closed on Sunday and take a look at where I see the market's at. Because at this point now, again, I have to see where we close today and how we act tomorrow to see really if we've broken trend or not. I know everyone's screaming that we're bearish, but I haven't determined that yet in my stock swish mind. But I will, I will look at that on Sunday to make a determination of that. But this is very, very, very profitable trading if you know what to do. So why trade gaps? Profits happen fast. Fast meaning in a couple of minutes like the Boeing or one day. And you can work from home. It's another great reason. And you get the overnight moves. You get the overnight moves like the gap down today. So if you were short today, you got paid huge. And that's what happened with the people that are, are, are with me. But if you learn how to trade the market, you can be your own boss. You can work from home. You can set your own schedule. And it's really, really fun. And quite frankly, making money is fun. And you will get to that point if you just stick with something that works. Many people blame themselves. They say, oh, I have terrible money management. Well, maybe you do. That's an easy fix. That's an easy fix if you have bad money management. You can fix that like that. You can fix it today. You don't need me to tell you to fix it if you have bad money management. What you need help, and most people do need help with, is they don't know what to do. They think that what they're doing for the strategy works, and they don't know what to do. And that is what I find. Most people do not understand. Then they lack the confidence. Then they lack the conviction. And I've got a lot of that, uh, which, which, which is something that you can learn and gain from me as well. But I like to trade gaps because, number one, they're predictable and very reliable, and you get them a lot. Setups happen often, almost daily. Every once in a blue moon, we'll have a day we don't have a trade. And then also there's big moves, okay? So, you know, big moves in the day, whether it's Boeing, whether it's Microsoft, whether it was the market, lots of big moves in gaps. I wrote this, actually. I wrote this paragraph like a long time ago but it really does seem very appropriate now because of everything that's happening in the world today's world is not the same as 25 years ago or 10 years ago or even five years ago before the bank bailout what we think is a job security today and a secure job may be gone tomorrow we can be great employees productive outgoing hardworking, and may not even matter to our employer if in the end the company you are working for can't keep you on and I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I do think that there are some industries that are going to that are going to look for bankruptcy protection. Could be the airlines, could be the cruise lines. People's jobs are going to be affected by what's going on. And not only that, banks are going to really tighten up. While it's a great time with interest rates being low, that's true. Banks are going to tighten up and they can't make as much money when the rates go low because they can't make as much in the spread. And when banks want to hoard their cash because they want to preserve their capital, and they'd, they'd rather preserve their capital and lend and they don't want to take risk, then where's the money going to come from? So it's, it's, we're in a very, very, very interesting time right now. And if you work for yourself and you have the skill and you have the talent and you know you're going to be okay no matter what, that is so powerful. It's as powerful as having a lot of money. It's good to have a lot of money. A savings protection in case anything happens it is an emergency but if you have earning power something called earning power which you can earn money yourself and you can work for yourself that is the most powerful thing and obviously number one would be having a lot of money and having earning power too okay which should be everyone's goal to rely on yourself anyways if a company has poor management they may fail I don't think that's what's happening right now, but unfortunately, this was the situation with the coronavirus has affected many industries and no one could have anticipated it. I mean, no one could have anticipated it at all, but, and it has nothing to do with you and it's not your fault. You are a skilled person with a great mind and you can work for yourself in the market. You can create your own job security. You can create your own opportunity by taking it upon yourself to learn how to trade the market and not only that, make money trading. So it is my philosophy that you only need one strategy to trade to make money. That's it. The strategy that I teach is called golden gaps. You can use it for day trades. You can use it for options trades. You can use it for swing trades. You can use it for long-term uh, moves in the market to determine positions for something like uh, your retirement account, when to buy, when to sell. For, for example, on March 3rd, when I realized the market was going to tank, you not only could you have shorted, 
on my call, you could have exited longs. So that's very, very powerful information because it would have saved you money. You would have saved profits from seeing from, from instead of exiting on a day like today, okay, where you would have just given back profits. And remember, a lot of people are up because the market has run up, pretty much really had a strong, strong run up from 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019, which was really one of the most bullish years. We made more brand new all-time highs in 2019 than I can even remember. And we made a lot in prior years. 2017, 2018, but 2019 was just amazing. Anyways, I teach a strategy that I created myself called Golden Gaps. A golden gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. Who makes golden gaps? Institutional money. Institutional money makes and creates the gap. Okay? So in the case of a bullish gap, institutions are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher in the trading day. Like if institutions were coming and buying this market, it wouldn't have fallen today, for example. In the case of a bearish gap, institutions are selling or shorting the stock. Therefore, the stock moves lower on the trading day. And again, that's what you had happen last night into this morning. But for me, when I make choices to trade, I look at high probability. It's high odds. I try to take trades that are high odds. Now, does that mean that every trade works? No. No, it's just the nature of trading and what it is, taking risk. Not everything works, but you have to have way more trades work than don't work. You have to have something that has a high win ratio, okay? And so for me, it's about probability. So I look at a 26-point rating system to determine if it rates 20 points or more. If a gap rates 20 points or more when it gaps down, it's a good short. If a gap rates 20 points or more as a gap up, it's a good long. So I only go long bullish gaps and short bearish gaps. Or if they don't write well, I don't do them at all. But I never do the reverse, okay? I look at it in, in probabilities. So you see what I'm saying? Anything that you can put the odds in your favor to trade will give you an edge. I definitely have an edge. I've had an edge in this market for a while. But now, the, you know, the, the last, like I said, two weeks, the, with the fact that I'm so good with spotting weakness with shorting, it, 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 just, it just paid us all. The golden gap system gives you an edge because it uses a rating or scoring system to pick the stock to trade. It reads the price of the gap and uses technical analysis on an advanced level and pinpoints which stock to trade that day and in what direction. Now, I will say when I saw the market was going to fall last Tuesday, I literally called everything that I could think of that was a market related stock. I called puts in like we did Boeing, Microsoft, Facebook, Tesla, because it's a good one to trade for options, the SPY, the diamonds. Um, BYND because that has some good moves in it. I called Apple very, very late because Apple was having a hard time breaking. Boeing, I called, uh, Netflix I called late and that broke. I called things were, that were market, what I call bucket of market stocks. Amazon, Google, called a bunch of strikes in those. Things that, that can move and also related to the market. The high probability is in the quality and detail in the rating system. 26 points is an enormous amount of detail um, it takes about five to 10 minutes to rate one gap if you're new. It takes less than five minutes once you become experienced with the system. Detail counts. Detail counts. It makes the difference between you making a little or making a huge amount of money. Detail counts. It makes a difference between you losing or being, uh, you know, just flat, break even. It makes a difference between you losing a lot and making money at all and it and, and it makes a huge huge difference it's the detail if i could come up with a system that had 56 points i would but i've been using this 26 point system now for a long number of years i've i've had some overlays some things that i you know that i just know it's not point of the part of the rating system but this is still a lot of things and the detail really really counts and it really really matters now i will say on a practical level you can take my class and you can learn my system and apply it on a non-practical level, I have a special uh, a gift. I have a skill set, a skill set that I developed over the last 12 and a half years where I will see things that sometimes defy explanation. And I do credit the people that have been uh, taking my calls because a lot of people don't understand everything that I know and they made a lot of money today. They took the trades, they put their wrists on, and they made a lot of money. There's one of the people that I know that's communicated to me the most this year is a trader that she's made $400,000 since the beginning of the year. She takes every single trade that I call. She plops the risk on. She's risking about $2,500 a trade. 
Sometimes she risks 3500 like if, if it's a Tesla and it costs like 3500 she will take one contract and do it. But she's made an enormous amount of money um, doing all my calls. And she's getting better. And the money is, is helping her get better because it's building her own confidence while she's building her account. So there, there is a certain experience level that comes with doing this for a long time. And like I said, I've been doing this since 2008. And the fact that I created my own system also, I mean, it's, that's one of the reasons why I know it so well as well. But the Golden Gap system is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate each gap to trade each morning using a checklist. I never skip the steps. I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. I always do it, okay? The 26-point checklist helps me determine if this is high probability. Is this going to come in with institutional buying or selling? That's how I know. Or, or is it not high odds? In which case, if it's not, then I'm not going to do it. Now, how do you find gaps? I get this question a lot. While you could pay for a scanner, I don't have a separate scanner. This is free. It's a top 20 list of of New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ Exchange picks, the top 20, so you get 40 picks down, and then you have 40 bullish picks, which is the gainers. So you could look at this every morning. You don't necessarily have to pay for a scanner. If it makes you feel better and you wanna pay for a scanner, you can, but you should have this free, and this is a lot of picks every day. And again, you should have this with your platform, and if you don't know where to find this in your platform, call your broker and just pull it up, okay? And that's what I go through, and I look at that usually first in the morning. And most things that we do are on there. And again, they're not junk like we were talking about. But anyways, how many do I get usually? Three to five a day or more really good ones in earnings season. And then in non-earning season, three to five a week. Okay? Again, earnings season is super busy. I tend to focus on one thing a day, although this year has been very active. Like I said, it's been good trading. If the opportunity is there, I will take the trades. If there's no opportunity, then I don't do anything. But a quality gap is one that rates high enough to trade based on the 26-point rating system. So you should be looking for a good risk-to-reward payout. Some trains can make five times the amount. That Boeing was a huge trade. It actually kept going. It was a big, big trade. You're never going to get out at the low in a short. You're never going to get out at the high in a long. But you should have some, some, some idea where you're going with it. Targets, which I teach in the class. And if you're risking $500, your goal is to try to at least turn around that $500 once. Now, sometimes you will risk money like that Boeing trade where you can make five times the amount. Okay, But every once in a while, you're just going to take a regular trade. If you risk $200, bucks, you make $200. Bucks. If you risk $300, you make $300. If you risk $300 and you make $280, that's good enough. Remember, this is not an exact science. Um, Noya is the only one here asking questions today. Noya is the only one alive. Uh, the 26 points is what I teach in the class, Noya. That's what you would pay me for the information. And it's also a 16-hour class. So I'm only talking here today for whatever I'm talking for, 45 minutes an, an hour. Uh, do I forget, Anna. Do I have 45 minutes or an hour? If you can quickly let me know. Anyways, here's just some, some of the ones that these were some of the, these were really so long ago now, it seems like it's hard to believe. I had called, remember I told you that Tuesday I saw at night that we were really going to drop, but we were already in the Boeing puts before the close on the third, but that night then I really saw we we're going to tank, but I had only called these out, I had called these really tight, so I called a, a 3.6 expiration for the 280s, they dropped and fell. The price of these Boeing ones, this is like two weeks ago now, was five fifty, and then you could have sold them for around fifteen sixty, fifteen bucks. Profit was thirteen thousand one hundred thirty dollars and a seventy one fifty risk. Again, if you only took one, you still would have made what one hundred eighty four percent or thereabouts. Could have made a little bit more even. This was a tight call from a Tuesday to a Friday that dropped immediately. It was a really really good call. That was buying puts in Boeing. Then I also call the CCL ones. This I didn't. I didn't even look at this one today. Actually, I've, it tells how many times were CCLs in today. That probably tanked. Uh, and I was thinking about doing that yesterday, and I'm like, oh, but these these little guys here aren't as good as some of the ones to trade for. But you can do them. Like this, I knew this really had to get some motion under it. But I did call on that Tuesday two CCL. I called the 32 puts dropped like a brick, and you could have risked a buck sixty, sold it for four fifty, thirteen thousand fifty. Again. 
this actually, you still could be in this theoretically. Actually, I'm realizing this this was to the 13th. I thought that was a good exit, whenever that was last week. Where Where is this today? Does anyone know? Somebody look this up. I just realized these were 13s. It's at 18. Oh my God. What are they worth? They're probably worth like, God, they gotta be worth, they gotta be worth at least 20. I thought, I thought this was a good exit. Again, because it's, again, 100% return investment, close to 200%. That's a great call. That's a great train. You could still be in this. That's total insanity. I haven't followed up with anyone to see if anyone is in these. Um, somebody's asked me about how do you trade the options with Laura Binney, right? You put, you can put the, you can put the, you can do whatever you want. You can wait. You can wait a little bit. If I call before the open, like, well, I mean, I call things at different times. I got to be honest with you. This was at 955. These other ones here was in the middle of the afternoon. I tend to call a lot of things in the pre-market. So when you get the trade, you can take it if it's during the live day. If you want to wait, if I call it like at 8 a.m., you can't take it then. You have to wait till we open. You can wait till the market wiggles and jiggles a little bit and take it between the first 15 minutes of the day. But I mean, we're, I'm trading momentum. I'm looking for momentum. So whether you get an exact price of 160, like here, this is a perfect example. This is a perfect example. It wouldn't have mattered what you paid for this. If you would have taken the trade before Tuesday, close a business on March 3rd, you would have made money and you would have made gobs and gobs of money. So you can't be that like conscious of getting an exact price because I'm not trading these to make the, again, again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for momentum. Again, the market's a good example of this. Boeing's a good example of this. I'm looking for something to come in and just swoop it up and scoop it up if it's a long or just sell it off to the bottom of the earth if it's a short. Do you know what I'm saying? Everyone is going to get a different price. Some will get better prices than others for fills in and out. This is not about that. It's not about squeezing 10 cents out of something. It's about making sure that you're taking the trade in the right direction and just that you're taking it at all. Like I said, the only way that you didn't make money in my trade calls in the last two, two and a half, three weeks is if you didn't do anything, <laughs> which pretty much everyone did. So some people did all the trades. Some people couldn't do all the trades because I called so many. I mean, but the reality is that uh, it's not about that. You can, you'll learn more in the class about it, but it's, don't, uh, what's that saying about pound, foolish, penny friendly, or whatever, whatever, whatever that is. Like, you, you know what I mean? You just, you got to make sure you get the trade. I think it's the best way to do it. Now, I wouldn't be taking them the day after. Like, if, if say you're in the office, you're in a meeting, or you're sick, and you get this CCL trade. Oh, look here, I forgot I even called these two. You could still be in these 31s. Look at that. Cost of these was $1.20, sold at three seventy. These are definitely worth more than 20 today. Uh, what was, I, no, I don't do things for gap closes. I don't trade gap fills. That is not what I do. You wouldn't need any ounce of brain effort or brain cells at all if you traded gaps for gap fills. One, they don't work consistently to profit and you wouldn't, you would, everyone would do them and make money if they worked. You wouldn't need one ounce of a brain cell to do that if it worked. You'd be rich. You'd be a billionaire. You wouldn't even be here. You want to be listening to me because you want to need any advice from me. They do not work. Just like buying dips doesn't work, which, by the way, everybody did about a week ago. A week ago. So, Boeing puts here. These you could still be in, which is total insanity. <laughs> you could still. Actually, this went more than a hundred dollars. Some of these are forgotten now. This was like two weeks ago. I called the Boeing puts. Strike 275 that expired this Friday. The stock this morning, I don't know the low, but it, I know it was under 170. This was more than 100 points to the strike. But this was such a good, just amount of money so quickly on when I had called them in the fourth. Some of these ones, I mean, these were like, these are like 50 trades ago. But here they are. Great call. Like if you look these up today, these are worth over 100. That, that's... I even forgot about some of these. <laughs> these 270s I called too. Look at this. 270s. But let's let's pull it up because I, I don't have these charts in here. Can, can you see here if I pull this up, my chart? Can you see this? These are 
so many trades ago I even forgot I called them here can you can you see this yeah so I here here's where I called this wow so I called those trades before this I called those trades here you can still be in those trades I, I don't know if anybody is but I know everybody made a lot of money today because I've gotten so many nice emails so I thought that was a great exit That, that, that's a huge, massive sell-off on the fifth. I thought it was a great exit, but <laughs> this is where the stock is today. The low today was 155.55. Holy crap. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, and I, I see again, I mean, this is, you're never going to get out of the low. Your goal is to make money, make money, make money, make money. Take the trades, book it, take it and book it, take it and book it. Now, the ones that I'd called recently in the last week, though, this drop off today, I was waiting for, I was stalking it. I was just this, I mean, it, I really actually thought this was gonna happen yesterday. And Boeing did fall off a cliff yesterday. And the market took a long time to go. I don't know why Apple, Apple prevented the market from falling off a cliff before today. But then even today, Apple couldn't hang on. Let me just look at this here. I mean, even today, Apple's trying to hang on, which is very, very funny, which is very, very interesting. Wow, I forgot about some of those. They seem like a hundred years ago because there's we've been so active since then. All right, let me go back here. Um, yeah, it's 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 crazy. That would uh, just you know, again, this was a million trades ago, but I thought the the move of the following day ran down to two sixty, which was really really good. Anyways, long story short. Everyone's doing great. This is the lady I told you about that's made about 400 grand so far this year. Jackie has taken a really small risk. She risked about $2,000, I mean, uh, $200 a trade. That was one of the days. And Elaine, I'm not sure of her risk, but I got a nice email from her yesterday or the day before. So, you know, people, people are doing well. I mean, the, the trades are working. But anyways, let's talk about why it works. It works to analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision of the directional bias for the gap. All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders, to make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame from the one minute, and then that has a high degree of focus and accuracy. Using the daily chart to make the decisions for the stock pick allows for accuracy in the direction, which is what I do. And then I use the one minute for good risk reward trades. And you can use the one minute for the entries if you want. Now, this was another day trade. This wasn't an option. It was Microsoft. This was a nice sell-off here, which happened previous to today. Again, this was lower today as well. We shorted it. 160.80 was the entry. Stop was 163.35. We added then the confirmation. 2,000 shares got the drop. Again, this dropped further too, $7,200. This is a day trade, one trade. It's a day trade that you would have done with margin. It, it just was, was a big move. We captured it at the exact right time, got the drop. This is a daily chart of Microsoft, and this too sold off today like everything else. I had called, a, I think I called the 155 puts in this, and I think there was another one out in this in Microsoft, but there was, there was a couple of Microsoft day trades and puts because this is a market mover too. This will move with the market, and that's what it did. The only difference though, between someone making 50 grand a week or someone making 10 grand a week is size, but you cannot risk $10,000 in a trade or $5,000 in a trade or $2,000 in a trade if you only have $2,000 in your account. Do you understand what I mean? Like you have to say if you have five grand, then you need to probably risk about 200, 250 a trade, literally. And then you make, you build the account from five grand to 10. Then you take an account, you build it from 10 to 20. Then you take an account and you build it from 20 to 40. And however long it takes you to do it. There's, there's no sense of urgency. This volatility in the market is not going to go away. We're going to have a great year. It's already been a great start to the year. And we're going to keep doing it because this volatility is not going to go away. Absolutely not 100%. It is here to stay, at least for 2020. But the only difference that you have in the, the amount that you make is the share quantity. So I teach in a class. It's once a month. It's called the Golden Gap System. It's a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches students how to play the stock on the day which is really, really nice. So you learn the checklist in the class. Again, it's a 16 hour course and it's got, I'm very, very, very good at reading price direction up or down in gaps. 
And there are a lot of people that are full-time traders now at this point with me because they're doing really, really well. I say transition from your full-time job in your into this doing trades on the side. You can do options while you still have another job, even if you can't day trade in the room. But if you want to day trade in the room, then day trade in the room. You could do both. Trading definitely has a lot of money in the market, but most people don't do well because they don't focus on the right strategy. So I think the most difficult part for people is finding someone like me, okay? Because I still have a relatively small to mid-sized company considering. And, and even though I'm on TV and I'm doing lots and lots of stuff, I'm very hands-on with the people and I'm very hands-on with what I do. I'm the one that sets the calls, makes the calls, runs the room, does everything that's pertinent to seeing what's happening in the, tra in the trades. So I have an assistant that does the emails and other things for me and another assistant that does, helps with the room like when I'm not going to be in the room like tomorrow. I'm taking the day off. And quite frankly, I deserve it. But the thing is like it's my knowledge that drives the process for everybody and when they when they need help they come to me so i think that trading is something that can offer you an unlimited pot potential for a great career it's just that you have to decide if this is really something that you want to do i know there's a lot of people out there who have been following me for a very 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 long time and i and, and it's just the timing has got to be right for you i guess to jump into it and want to do it but the Golden Gap course will help you find success in the market. So what do you what do you need? What do you need besides my class? I call it the four C's. You need clarity. Know exactly why you're doing this. And then every trade you choose, choose the trade thoughtfully, not in a whim. Okay. Do you want to take this trade, long or short? Do you want to do this with how much risk? Confidence is very important too. And if you've been losing, this can be a struggle for a lot of people. So the best way to build your confidence is taking it slow, backing off your risk, thinking about what you're doing, okay, and just being green. A series of green days, even if you're making $50 a day, will really, really, really help your confidence a lot. And also, I think you need conviction. And you may have needed that to stay with these trades that I called the last two weeks because the market wiggled and jiggled, rallied, and the puts all worked huge. So you really needed the conviction to stay with it, which I definitely had. And then the commitment, the commitment to do it, the commitment to learn it, which is important as well. So I teach a whole system how to trade. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a two-day class. The next class is March 21st and 22nd. It's $69.99, it's 9 to 5 Eastern Time, it's online, you can be anywhere in the world and take it. If you're interested and want to sign up, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. And if you want a trial for next week before the class, you can have a one-week free trial. Now, any questions here from anyone at all? Think about what I said today about earning power versus having money. In a best case scenario, you have a lot of money and you have earning power to earn more. But if you don't have a lot of money and you have the knowledge and the information, which I absolutely do, and the people that come to me do, you can earn more over time. And that's where the self-empowerment comes into it. And that's what's truly, truly powerful. Now, do I have to 215 to pull up some charts or was I, am I done at two, Anna? Can you let me know? Since I can't hear. And are you there? Um, I do have a options newsletter. You will not get the day trains. You will only get the options in the newsletter. It is an annual newsletter. You can go to my website, and if you want to sign up, you email me for the forums. It's $69.99 a year. $99 a year. It's seven grand. You get all the options trades that will call for 12 months. I do not have any other shorter time frame, and there also is no trial. You won't get the day trades, but you'll get the options trades. Which, which has been pretty big. Anna, do I have time to pull up charts or am I just still two? Oh, Anna said time's up. Okay. Time's up. Listen, be careful people. This market is very volatile. Um, what about charts? Oh, I can show some charts? All right, let's just see where the market is right now. All right, can you see this? Oh, you know you know what I wanted to look at. I just wanted to see.
see here where where we I mean I just think this is anyway I, I really think it I I mean I, I'm really gonna look at the Sunday because I mean it ooh, look at that I really think that we're gonna have to see one where we close today and two what we do tomorrow which tomorrow's Friday and I didn't look at what econs out tomorrow but you know this is this is like right on the cusp here let me look and see at the at the diamonds oh we we just pummeled through 20 230 212 wow this looks bad <coughs> wow this looks bad so everyone was telling people to go long here everyone was telling people to go long here everyone was telling people to go long here if you went long here how do i know it took a while for the market to fall but i knew it was coming so i knew the market was coming here at night, at night I saw it. And then we rallied the next day and I stayed on top of it. I leaned into this market like you would be leaning on a door to break through it, <laughs> which today was the breakthrough. But you know, a lot of these trades were up Monday morning, but then I called more. <coughs> conviction helps you trade. And you don't, you don't have conviction that something's a long and a short at the same time. You either have conviction somebody's a long or you have conviction somebody's a short. You don't trade the same thing in both directions. That is ultra stupid too. And I know people have been doing that. And you have no conviction when you do that either. I leaned in on this, in this put, and this, and the, all the shorts in the market, we leaned straight right into it. And, uh, and that's why today was really big for everybody. Listen, if you're interested, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Have a fabulous weekend, everybody. Thanks so much for having me. I wish that I had sound. Hopefully, Anna got the tape. And good luck with this market. Thank you.